الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا ما الحمد لله الإمام البصيري رحمه الله تعالى سأز بشرى لنا معشر الإسلام إن لنا من العناية ركنا غير منهدم لما دعا الله داعينا لطاعته بأكرم الرسل كنا أكرم الأمم بشرى لنا glad tidings to us يا أمة الإسلام that we are amongst the best of nations so alhamdulillah and why are we the best of nations is because we have the best of prophets every nation since the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam until Nabi Allah Isa alayhi salam thousands and thousands and millions and millions of, of generations and each generation had their prophet some did it but the majority did and each Prophet had a nation. So when the Prophet وسلم, our Prophet وسلم, Khatim al Anbiya wa Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came, he was the greatest of all prophets. And because of that, we are the greatest of all nations. Wow. Uh, and there's another hadith where the Prophet وسلم, says that Ahlul Jannah, in the Day of Judgment, the people of Jannah are 180 rows. 180 rows. More than 100 and uh, 30 rows are only the Prophet Sallallahu nation. And look at that. And he says in another hadith, Ulama ummati ka anbiya ibn Israel. That the, that the scholars of my ummah are the likes or, or as, as the, the prophets of Bani Israel. Look at the fadl, the virtue that this ummah has. And we live short lives. We have short lives. Lakin, we, despite that, we were still greater than those that have lived thousands and thousands of years. In fact, Sayyidina Nuh salam, Allah mentions it clearly in the Quran that he, his, his, his time of prophecy only was 950 years. He once saw a, a woman crying, Sayyidina Nuh salam. It's mentioned in the, uh, in the books of the Tariq that he once saw a woman crying and he asked her, why are you crying? And she said, I lost my child. And so he asked her, how old is your child? And he, she said, He's a small baby. He only passed away after 300 years. <laughs> small baby. He was only 300 years old when he passed away. And so saying, I not told her that uh, there is a nation that will come. There's an ummah that will come. Their lives are only their lives are only 60 to 70 years. 60 to 70 years. The vast majority of their lives are only roughly around 60 to 70 years. And she said, if that was only my life. I would have dedicated only for sujood, for sujood. There's, there's no point of building a house, you know, uh, thinking of the future, if you're only going to live for 70 years. So this ummah, the, the, despite their shortcomings, despite their, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a small um, amount of years to live in this earth, we are higher and greater than the, 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 than the nations before us. And that is only uh, because of the Prophet sallallahu because he was the best of prophets. He was the best of prophets. He says in the hadith, Ana Sayyid Waladu Adam Wala Fakh. That I am the, the master of Adam and anything that comes under Adam. And I'm not saying this to show off. Because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. His names, one of the names was Al Mukhtar, Al Mustafa, the chosen one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this clear in the Quran. Every prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him, he called him by his name. يا يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة يا زكريا إنا نبشرك بغلام وإذ قلنا لآدم يا عيسى بن مريم يا موسى all of them except for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never once stated them by his first name يا أيها النبي يا أيها الرسول يا أيها المزمل يا أيها المدث that is an act of respect the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never the Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم never called him by his name directly and even when Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned the prophets in their chrono chronological order, the Tirtib al Zamani, he started by mentioning the Prophet first. And when we took from the Prophets their oath, Waminka. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated him first. And then he mentions them, the Tirtib. After Nuh came Sayyidina Ibrahim, Wa Musa, Wa Isa ibn Maryam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when he mentioned the prophets before him, and he said, <coughs> Those are the ones that Allah guided. He didn't say, follow them. He said, <coughs> He didn't say, <coughs> No, he said, follow their guidance. Because he doesn't want anyone to be 
the, the, he doesn't want any other prophet to be the imam for the Prophet Sallallahu Not long ago we had the Isra al-Mi'raj where he was their imam, physically. Physically he was their imam. Why? Because he's imam al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Bal huwa nabiyu al-anbiya. That Allah Subh'ana told them that if he, he was to come in their time, follow them. Allah Subh'ana ta'ala told the other prophets that if Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were to come in your time, khalas, he is the prophet now, you follow him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, all this, all the, why, am I, why, why am I starting my lecture with this? Is because this prophet we have is one of the greatest of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And it's upon us to know him. Because this is our identity as Muslims. As Muslims. This is what we, we, yani we are proud to have this, this man sallallahu as our prophet. This noble man as our prophet. This is our treasure as Muslims. And one of the greatest things that can help us in knowing him because it's mandatory. I repeat, it's mandatory to know him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's very extremely important to study his seerah, to know him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am lam ya'rifu rasulahum, fahum lahum mumkinun. Do they not know their prophet? Do they not know of him? Know about him? Do they, do they not recognize him? And we weren't there in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We came 1,000 now, 1,444 years later. So we weren't there in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu But what do we have? We have his seerah, his seerah. And it is extremely important to study his seerah. In fact, I tell this to Muslims and even non-Muslims. I tell this to non-Muslims all the time. I emphasize on this a lot, to study the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know how Muslims or non-Muslims when they come to the deen or when they are interested in deen, some people, uh, most of the time people give them a uh, a English translation of the Quran or a, a translation of the Quran in whatever language they speak or a Quran I tell them study the seerah first study the Prophet Sallallahu seerah because anyone can relate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam anyone can relate if Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says about the Prophets before him the Imam was reciting right now in Surah uh, in, in, in Salat Al-Aisha وَاتِلُوا عَلَيْهِ نَبَأَ أَبْنَيْ آدَمْ if Allah commands the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to narrate and tell us the stories of the of the nations before him. What to do alayhim naba anuh. What to tell them the story of Nuh, tell them the story of of, uh, of Musa, tell them the story of Isa, tell them the story of Adam. And then he says in another verse, Nahnu na kusu alayka ahsan al qasas that we tell you the best of the best of stories. And then he says in another verse, Ma kana hadith and yuftara. They're not ordinary stories. These stories will increase faith in the faith you already have. They will illuminate your heart. These stories will give you iman and yaqeen, certainty. These are not just ordinary, normal stories. And, and these are the stories of the nations and the prophets before him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do you think of his stories, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When he is the best of all mankind, right? So the, the seerah, studying the seerah of the Prophet is extremely important. Sayyidina, uh, and, and the first people that, that knew this were the Sahaba. Where the, the first people that knew this, that knew the importance of this, the significance of this, were his fellow companions. Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah, and he's a great Sahaba. He attended the Battle of Badr. He attended the battle of Al-Hudaybiyah uh, Al when the Prophet ﷺ said in that battle Antum khayru ahli al that all of you that attended this battle are the best people in this on the face of earth like, despite all that Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah traveled Al-Imam al-Dahabi says this in Seer Alam al he traveled all the way from Medina to Cairo in Egypt for just one hadith for one hadith. And he's a great Sahabi. He heard so many hadiths from the Prophet. Why but, but why is he doing this? Because he knows the importance of the Prophet. Sirah. He knows the importance of the Prophet's hadith. He know what is Sirah? Sirah is the Prophet's hadith, his actions, Af'al, and uh, his aqwal, his sayings, and anything that he that that happened in front of him or in his presence. And the, all that is his here, his life. That short life, 10 years after, he only lived for 63 years, the Prophet said. But a life full of benefits. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by his life. La amruka. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, it's something great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by his life. That very short life. Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah traveled all this distance and took a hadith from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Anais for just for, because he knew the significance of the Prophet uh, uh, sayings and his hadith. And, and, and Sayyidina Ali. Would, would teach his children the battles of the Prophet and, and uh, uh, 
That's one aspect of his seerah. Just like how they would teach their children a surah from the Quran. And Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas says, هَذِهِ مَجْدُكُمْ تَعَلَّمُوهَا Like, learn the seerah. Because this is your majd. Majd means, this is what gives you glory. Right? We right now as Muslims, what makes us different than, than other people? <coughs> There's plenty religious right now on the face of earth. What makes us different? <coughs> is our, our identity as Muslims. And, and we got this by who? By the Prophet ﷺ. Otherwise, Allah would have just sent the Qur'an to Sayyidina Jibreel. And you know what? Here, here's the Qur'an. This is what's halal, this is what's haram. And uh, that's it. Everyone just read the Qur'an. That can he send the Prophet ﷺ as a role model. And anyone can relate to him in any aspect of life. As a father, as a father, uh, uh, as an orphan, as a husband, as a leader, as a commander, as an imam as a businessman, as a political man. Anyone can relate to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the things that help us and assist us in knowing his seerah and knowing him more, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does say, know him, right? And he says in another ayah, آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ آمِنُوا like, have faith and believe in Allah and in his messenger, right? So how do we believe in someone that we don't know? You have to first know him. Right? Can you believe in something you don't want to first know him, learn about him, and believe. And then he says, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow. يُحِبِبْكُمْ huh? Allah. Right? You can't follow some, someone you don't know. You have to first study his seerah. You have to first know him, sallallahu and know about him. Then you can follow him. Then you can love him. Right? We teach our children nowadays, love the Prophet, love the Prophet, love the Prophet. Right? But you have to first tell them about the Prophet. You have to give them a story of the Prophet so that they will fall in love with the Prophet And one of the things that will assist us in this is learning and studying his lineage, sallallahu his nasab. And before I get into that, lineage, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, Arabs and non-Arabs. They say, al-Arab wal ajam Arab are those that, 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 it's a race, meaning those that not only speak Arabic, but those that come from an, uh, a lineage that spoke Arabic. And then you have the non-Arabs. The rest of the world. The Prophet ﷺ, he came from the Arabs, and in, and and the Arabs, they had a uh, something they were very familiar with was the importance of, of lineage, having good lineage, and studying lineage. That's all they used to do in the ayam al-jahiliyyah before the Prophet ﷺ. They would maintain their lineage, and they would they they would study their their lineage, and other nations would do that too. But the Arabs took it to a whole other level where they would dedicate all their lives just um, studying the, the, their lineages, their nasab. They call it in Arabic nasab. And it's very important. And one of the things that um, <coughs> would damage someone's nasab is their actions. So they, there's a lineage, so there's a noble lineage and a normal noble lineage. So some people, like for example, for instance, they could come from two brothers, but one was a good man, right? And, and was known in the society as a good person. And the other one uh, was the opposite of that. So yet they're two brothers. This person has a good lineage now, and this person has a different lineage. So in Arabic, there's nasab and there's hasab, right? Ala kulli hal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he comes, from, he comes from, an, from the Arab community, and he comes from the best of 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 the tribes of the Arab. Of the Arabs. So, he says in, in a hadith, Inna Allah astafa min walad Ismail kanana. The Arabs they come from Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam is the son of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Sayyidina Ismail had brothers. He had Sayyidina Ishaq as his brother. Sayyidina Ishaq and all his uh, descendants are non Arabs. But Sayyidina Ismail, his descendants are the Arabs. And all the Arabs in the world today that live today, they all go back to Sayyidina Ismail He's the father of all Arabs. And the Prophet ﷺ, his nasab, his lineage, it goes all the way to Sayyidina Ismail But when he would mention his lineage, he would stop at Sayyidina Adnan. Because all the historians, right, all of them, not a single one, uh, all of them, they have agreed that the Prophet's lineage, all the way to Adnan is <coughs> Sahih, meaning it's accurate. After Sayyidina Adnan, the historians right now, they, they have some ikhtilaf. They mention this name first and then that name, but they all agree that his lineage Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ends up all the way to Sayyidina Ismail. And we should, 
we should memorize the Prophet Sallallahu lineage all the way to Sayyidina al -Nan. As children, uh, as, as youth, as young people, and also, also as children, we should, as parents, we should teach our children the Prophet Sallallahu lineage all the way to, to Sayyidina al -Nan and make them memorize it. And I will mention the lineage right now, inshallah, just for the barakah of the majlis. He is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad. He is Sayyidina Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abdi Manaf bin Qusayt bin Hakim bin Murrah bin Ka'b, bin Lu'ay, bin Ghalib, bin Fih, bin Malik, bin al nadr bin Kinana, bin Khuzayma, bin Mudrika, bin Ilyas, bin Mudar, bin Nizab, bin Ma'ad, bin Adnan. 21 names. Prophet Sallallahu lineage, whenever he would mention his full name, he would start with Ana Sayyidina, Ana Muhammad, bin Abdul, bin means son, Ibn, bin Abdullah, bin Abdul Muttalib, bin Hashim, bin Abdi Manaf. Bin Qusayt, Bin Hakim, Bin Murrah, Bin Ka'b, Bin Lu'ay, Bin Ghalib, Bin Fihr, Bin Malik, Bin Nadr, bin, all the way to Sayyidina Adnan. That is, Bani, we have children right now that have memorized the whole squad of a team, of a sports team, whether it be football or basketball. And not only the people in the squad, but even maybe the people that are sitting in the benches. So, Bani, it is. It is recommended, and I highly suggest that people memorize the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lineage. Right? We, I come from me and Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Basid. We're, we're in a Abdul Samad. We're in a uh, Tareem, and in Tareem you find little children that have memorized the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lineage. In fact, some of them, the the Ahlul Bayt, the the Sada that come from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lineage. They have memorized their, their lineage all the way to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi lineage and then all the way from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Sayyidina Adnan. SubhanAllah. Now, SubhanAllah. Six, seven year olds. SubhanAllah. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he comes from one of the greatest tribes of all. So he says in the hadith, Inna Allah has tafa, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has chosen from the awlad of Sayyidina Ismail, from the children of Sayyidina Ismail, Kanana. So Sayyidina Ismail had many children. But from Sayyidina Ismail, all the way to Sayyidina uh, <coughs> Rasulullah Sayyidina Muhammad, there were no prophets. There were no, there were no prophets. Anyhow, he says that in Allah has tafa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen from the children of Ismail, from the descendants of the Duriya to Sayyidina Ismail, all the way to um, Kanana, he has chosen Kanana, meaning that Kanana, when you have, for example, I have ten children. And then my children have another ten children, for example. So I'm a grandfather now. If, 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 my, I, I, for example, I have five sons. Umar, Muhammad, Ali, Uthman. And then Ali has five sons. Sorry. So Allah subhanahu wa chooses the best from each, from each generation. He chooses the best from each generation. So he says that Sayyidina Ismail had many children. Until Kanana, they were, Kanana's um, or path to Sayyidina Ismail is the best path. They're the best forefathers. And again, what did I say? What makes a Nasib great is the nobility. And then he says, he goes on and says, he goes on and says, Wastafa min Kanana, and he chose from Kanana Quraysh. Quraysh. So the Prophet ﷺ's tribe Quraysh. So not all Arabs are Quraysh. But Quraysh is a part of is a part of Arabs. There are many other Arabs. But he chose Quraysh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them more special than the than others because of their nobility. Wastafa min Quraysh, and not all Quraysh are, perf are, 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 are noble. There are ranks in nobility. Some are more noble than others. Some are more honorable than others. He says, Wastafa min Quraysh, like he's honored from Quraysh, Bani Hashim, children of Bani Hashim. And Bani Hashim, what's more honorable like than Bani Hashim? He says, and he chose me from Bani Hashim. And he says, he goes on and says, فَأَنَا خِيَارٌ مِنْ خِيَارٍ مِنْ خِيَارٍ I am from the best of the best of the best. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does that mean? What does that, what does that entail? That entails that all his forefathers, scholars have agreed that all his forefathers, except for a very small minority, but all his forefathers, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are all people of not just Tawheed, but they are people of Kamal Tawheed, complete Tawheed. From his fathers, from his father, straight father, direct father, Sayyidina Abdullah, and his mother, Sayyidina Amina, all the way to, to, to Sayyidina Ismail. All the way, in fact, all the way to Sayyidina Adam. Sayyidina Adam, 
they are all people of Kamal Tawheed, complete faith, complete Tawheed. And the, the Dalil is, the evidence is, because this is creed, Aqeedah, you need evidence. The Dalil is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one of the Dalil, there's many evidences, there's many groups, but one of them is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا That we do not, um, uh, we do not uh, punish people unless we send them a Prophet So we should all know that the Prophet's forefathers are people of faith. His father, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, was a young man when he went and he had the Prophet nur before the Prophet was born. He had the Prophet nur in his face, the light of the Prophet of the prophecy when his was in his face, his father, Sayyidina Abdullah. Eighteen year old young man. He went and he got married to Sayyidina Amin, his mother, Amina bin Tuwah. So Sayyidina Abdullah went and got married to Sayyidina Amina bin Tuwah. Before he got married to her, I said he had this nur in his face, right? He was a very handsome man, the very handsome man, and not just handsome, but also on top of that, his, his face was, was, was full of light. He was walking once in the streets of Mecca, and a Jewish lady, a Jewish lady, because the people of uh, the Jews, they had the book of Torah, but the Arabs, they were barbarians, they had no book. Why? Because the Arabs, they, they from Sayyidina Ismail all the way to the Prophet I said there were no prophets, right? But from the Bani Ishaq, there were many prophets. Sayyidina Ishaq, had a, he was a prophet. He gave birth to a prophet, Sayyidina Ya'qub, or he was the father of Sayyidina Ya'qub, sorry. And Sayyidina Ya'qub also was a prophet, was a father of another prophet, Sayyidina Yusuf, Alayhi and, and from Bani Israel, there were many other prophets. Sayyidina Yahya, Alayhi was a prophet. Sayyidina Zakariya, Alayhi was a prophet. Sayyidina Yahya, Isa, and they were cousins. Sayyidina Yahya and Sayyidina Isa, they were cousins, the first cousins. They were prophets. All these prophets were in Bani Israel, but there were no prophets to the Arabs. So when the Prophet ﷺ came, he was the only prophet from Sayyidina Ismail And uh, back to what I was saying, Sayyidina Abdullah, when he was, uh, the Prophet's father, Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, when he was a uh, walking in the streets of Mecca, a Jewish lady, because the people, of, uh, 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 the Jews, they had the book Torah, what I, what I was trying to say was, that they knew that a prophet was coming. Because the, 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 in the Torah, it, it, it was mentioning that there, there will come a prophet. There will come a prophet. So they knew that a prophet was coming, and, and their ruhban, their priests, yeah, and they, the, the people of the book that were studying uh, the Torah, that were on the deen of Sayyidina Isa, the deen of Sayyidina Musa, they knew this. This, uh, this lady, she came to Sayyidina Abdullah. Her firasa told her that this is the father of the Prophet And she wanted, she, wanted that to, she wanted to take that honor, that honor of giving the birth to the Prophet. So she said, she called him to the haram, to committing adultery. And this is what he said. There's a poem, it's mentioned, it's mentioned in, the, in, in the books of, of, uh, of, of the tarikh. He says, أَمَّا الْحَرَامُ فَالْمَمَاتُ دُونَهُ This is what Sayyidina Abdullah says, the Prophet's father. As for the haram, I would rather die than doing the haram. وَالْحِلُّ لَا حِلَّ فَأَسْتَبِينَهُ And what you're doing, what we're doing, you're asking, you're not asking for the halal, you're asking for the haram. فَكَيْفَ بِالْأَمْرِ الَّذِي تَبْغِينَهُ يَحْمِ الْكَرِيمُ عِرْضَهُ this is you're, you're calling me for something that would destroy my deen because they were they, I said the forefathers of the Prophet ﷺ, they were they were people of faith they were on the deen of Sayyidina Ibrahim so the, he says that he still has the morals he says this is what you're doing is haram what you're telling me to do is haram so he went and he did it the right way ala tariqatullah wa rasul sunnatullah wa rasul halal he went to go, he got married to Sayyidina Amina bint Wahab he saw her he saw that that Jew lady after a while after he got married and uh, he uh, she didn't she didn't call him again so he's like you're not calling me this time he said she said no the nur has left your face meaning that that Sayyidina Amina she was honored to give birth to the Prophet but look at look at look at look at the the akhlaq or the the the, the the, yeah, the character of his father, Abdullah, before giving, before, before prophecy. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to manifest and, and preserve this lineage. That no haram enters this lineage. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَقَلُّبُكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ He's the one that, 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 that watches you through your ancestors. And he says, how does he describe the Prophet's ancestors? He says, سَاجِدِينَ Those that are, commit, that, those that are in, Prostration, those sujood. 
So Sayyidina Abdullah, he was the son of who? Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. He was the son of Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib had ten children. Ten children. And Sayyidina Abdullah was the youngest one of them all. And he was the most beloved to his father Abdul Muttalib uh, than them all as well. And in fact, he does have a story, Sayyidina Abdullah. He has a beautiful story. He, he is called the Bih Athani, the second one that's, that's slaughtered. Who is the first one that's slaughtered? Sayyidina Ismail, his great grandfather. Sayyidina Ismail, Al Dabih, they call him. Because we know the story is mentioned in the Quran where Sayyidina Ibrahim was, uh, he saw in a dream that he was slaughtering his son. And the prophets, their dreams are true. They, they, they don't just dream, their dreams are wahi. So he woke up the next day saying, Ya, ya Bunayya, I, I saw in my dream that, you know, I'm slaughtering you. You have to do it. And so what did he say? Do what you want, dear Father. So we know the story, and then he was going to do it, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did a, a, a sacrifice from a sheep from the Jannah. Something similar happened to uh, Sayyidina Abdullah, the father, the, pro, the father of the Prophet. Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet's grandfather, he said, he, when he was, when he was a, a, a young man, he said, if I have in the future, if, if I give birth, to 10 children, 10 boys, then I will slaughter one of them as a as gratitude, thank, to being, just being grateful. So he was a young man, he said, if, if I ever have 10 sons, I will slaughter one of them <laughs> as, a, as a, as showing my gratitude to Allah subhanahu shukran lillah. And so uh, he kept his promise, subhanAllah. When he had 10 children, his, uh, his 10th one was, was Abdullah the father of the Prophet So he said, I have to do my, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a man of my word, I have to keep my, uh, my promise. And what happened was, uh, he loved Abdullah, he didn't want to slaughter Abdullah. But he said that, I will slaughter the tenth one. So he went to um, the priests in, in Mecca and told them, this is my situation, you know. I, 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 I made a promise, but I don't want to do it because I love this child. So he said, get a, a ball, put their names inside, and who, whosoever, is, who, whosoever name comes out, slaughter them, slaughter him. So he did it the first time, Sayyidina Abdullah's name came out. He did it the second time, Abdullah's name came out. He did it the third time, Abdullah's name came out. Abdullah's name is coming out all the time. So they said, the priest told them that do this action, and there's something called fida. Fida means in Arabic, يعني, um, is one. Uh, so if we have, for example, in the Sharia, <coughs> And nafs bin nafs, meaning that if you kill someone, you will be killed for that person. The other option is you give something fidya, fidya, right? That fidya, bounty, is it? bounty, bounty. Okay. So um, you give um, the fidya. The first person that said that one bani adam, meaning one human being, is equivalent to a hundred camels in terms of the fidya, right? Is is who is Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet said that. Because he, uh, when the priests came and told them that okay. instead of slaughtering your, um, your child, Abdullah, um, do, uh, do uh, uh, 10 camels each. He, so what he would do is he had the bowl, he'd take a name out and it would be Abdullah. So he'd put it back and say, no, I'll do 10 camels instead. And he'd do it again and it would be 10 camels instead. And he did that until it reached 100. He doesn't want the name of Abdullah to come out. So what, after, after the 10th the time, I, uh, uh, so he put in the bowl the names of his sons and also a paper that, that has uh, camels. Does that make sense? So he has a bowl, the names of his children, and in the bowl there's also camels, like a piece of paper. So each son has a piece, his name is written on a piece of paper. And there's also an extra piece of paper, an 11th one, that says camel. So after the 10th time, so how many camels does he have now? 100. Right? After the 10th time, it, every time they just come up camel, the, 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 the paper that had camel in would come up. So he knew this was a sign that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, doesn't want him to slaughter any of his children. And so uh, that nickname came, al dabih that he is the, he is the dabih meaning that he's, he was about to be slaughtered, Abdullah. Just like Sayyidina Ismail was about to be slaughtered. And in the hadith, the Prophet says, Ana ibn al I am the, I am the son of the two um, uh, my two forefathers that were about to be slaughtered, the Bihain, meaning Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina Abdullah. Abdul Muttalib, uh, he also has a beautiful story. He, his father, <coughs> Abdi Manaf, Sayyidina Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Abdi Manaf. His father, Abdi Manaf, 
They're all from Mecca, by the way. <coughs> His father, Abdi Manaf, went to Medina and got married to a, a, a woman, her name was Selma, from the tribe of, of Bani Najjar. Bani Najjar, they are the Ansar. That are, that they're, they will be the Ansar. At the time, they're not the Ansar, but they will be the Ansar. The Prophet Hassan, they're from Yathid, Medina. She gave birth to Abdul Muttalib. And his real name is actually Amr. His real name is, is Amr. Abdul Muttalib's real name is Amr. What happened was, when, uh, when Abdi Manaf went to Medina and got married to... He went to Medina for tijara, for, for, for business. And what happened was, he saw there a beautiful, noble uh, sister that was not only uh, beautiful in appearance, but also beautiful in her akhlaq and her mu'amala. How she was treating the people and how she how smart she was in business. And he asked her, and she told they told him that she's from Bani Nujab, which was a noble tribe in Medina. And so he asked for her uh, for her hand, and uh, she accepted. Alhamdulillah. And after that, uh, he did a, a, a ceremony, a, a, a zawaj, and a hafla in in, uh, in Medina. And she got pregnant with Abdul Muttalib. While she was pregnant, he his father Abdul Manaf traveled for business and went to Gaza. Gaza, Palestine right now, Jerusalem, part of the Palestine. And in Gaza, uh, Abdul Manaf passed away and he's buried there in Gaza. Sayyidatina uh, Salma, the, the, the mother of, uh, of, of Abdul Muttalib, she gave birth to Abdul Muttalib. His name was Amr. She gave birth to him and he was an orphan. He was living with his mother, with his uncles from the mother's side, Bani Najjar. Bani Najjar, I said, there are noble tribes. When the Prophet ﷺ came to, from the Hijrah, we know the story of the Munshid was saying, Tala al-Badr alayna, that was the first nasheed that the people of al Medina sang to welcome the Prophet ﷺ. And after that nasheed, some small girls did a second nasheed. The Prophet ﷺ, when he let the camel, because everyone wanted the Prophet ﷺ to live uh, in their place or in their house to host the Prophet ﷺ. So he said he didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. He could have chosen, I want to stay there, but then he'd hurt people's feelings, the other people that, that wanted to, to have the honor in hosting the Prophet ﷺ. He said, let the camel, and wherever the camel stays is where I'm going to stay. So the camel chose uh, Bayt Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Bayt Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Near the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, was the Prophet great uncles from the mother's side, Bani Najjar. And a few girls, small girls, they were dancing and they were happy and they were singing. They were saying, Nahnu jawari min Bani Najjar, Ya habbada Muhammadan min Jar. Nahnu jawari min Bani Najjar. We are, we are girls from the tribe of Bani Najjar. Ya habbada Muhammadan min Jar. What a beautiful neighbor we have, the Prophet ﷺ. And they were singing, and the Prophet ﷺ saw them and smiled and said, Atuhbibnani, do you love me? And they said, of course we love you, Ya Rasulullah. And then he said, Yashhadullah anni uhibbukum. Allah witnesses that I also love you. So, uh, Salma, the mother of Abdul Muttalib, when she gave birth to him, he was living with his uh, uncles from the mother's side in Medina. And he had brothers in Mecca because Abdi Manaf also had wives uh, before Salma in Mecca. And they were uh, adults. So they knew about his brother, Abdul Muttalib, but they never saw each other, they never met. Until one day, um, I believe it was uh, uh, the, the father of Hassan bin Thabit went to Al Medina and he saw Abdul Muttalib. He saw Abdul Muttalib. And he came back to uh, Mecca to tell uh, the other sons of Abdi Manaf. Their half brother, the other sons of Abdi Manaf, meaning Abdul Muttalib's half brothers in Mecca, and he told them that you have a beautiful brother in, you have a uh, brother in Medina that's young, that's smart, that's that's noble, that's handsome, and they went and they they went to go visit. They said, if you're praising him so much, we'll go and see who this brother is. And they went to uh, Medina, but his mother, Abdul, uh, uh, Abdul Muttalib's mother said, no, you're not taking my only child from me. And she said, no, I want to. They said, he is a stranger here. Meaning that, because in the Arabs, I said they, were, they took the lineage to a whole other level. Uh, anyone that's not in the family of uh, their forefathers is considered a stranger, even if it's your own uncles. <laughs> so they said to her, to her that, no, he's a stranger here. You are his mother, but he's not with his people. He has to come back to Mecca. And he has to stay with his people. So she said, no, 
and they were they 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 obviously they got into an argument, and she said, "Stay with me to three days." They she, they finally ag agreed that after a certain time of, of um, after a certain amount of days that they will leave because he wanted to leave directly. He wanted to come, just take the brother and go. So she um, urged him to stay in Medina, and then uh, he stayed after a while. Alhamdulillah, they uh, they uh, they they left. Uh, both sides were happy. He told her that she is welcome to come visit him anytime in, in Mecca. Then he's also welcome to visit his, uh, his, his mother and his uh, uncles in Medina whenever he wants. When he was coming back from, uh, from Medina, he was with his, uh, his, his, um, his, his uncle. His uncle. I said Abdul Muttalib's name was Amr. He was coming back with his uncle. His uncle's name is Muttalib. His uncle's name is what? Muttalib. He was coming back with his uncle Muttalib, and he was in the back of the, of the of the horse. So he was holding his uncle like this. When he arrived in Mecca, the people of Mecca they saw Al Muttalib because they know him. So the Prophet Hassan's lineage is the most noble of all people. They are well known. So everyone in Mecca knows Al Muttalib, but they didn't know this young kid. So they called him Abd Muttalib, the slave of Muttalib. They thought he was a servant or a slave that that Muttalib bought from Medina. And he would say, Wait, Hakum, this is not a slave, this is my nephew. Wait, Hakum, this is not a slave, like, this is my nephew. But the name stick. It, 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 it. Everyone would call him Abdul Muttalib, and his actual, his birth name, Amr, um, it kind of vanished because he was more popular for being called Abdul Muttalib. You know, when a nickname is, you're more popular with that name instead of your actual name. That's what happened with uh, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, he is the, um, he is the son of, Abdi Manaf, I mentioned that passed away in Gaza. And Abdi Manaf is the son of Hashim. 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 Uh, Afwan, sorry, sorry. I said Hashim's name is Amr. And uh, Abdul Muttalib's name is Shaybatul Hamd. Afwan, Shaybatul Hamd. <coughs> I repeat, Abdul Muttalib's name is Shaybatul Hamd. And his father, Hashim, his real name is, or his birth name is, is, um, is Amr. And Shaybat al-Hamd, why is he called Shaybat al-Hamd? He's called Shaybat al-Hamd because when he was born, in Arabic, Shayb means um, gray hair. When you reach, uh, when you reach uh, Shaykhufa, that's when you, you, get, you get gray hair. It's, it's, it's a sign of Noor. <laughs> it's a sign of Noor. Um, <coughs> but uh, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, when he, when he was a baby, an infant, he had gray hair. So he was called Shaybat al-Hamd. But then when he uh, came to Mecca with his uncle Muttalib, they called him Abdul. Abdul Muttalib. He is the son of Abdi Manaf, and Abdi Manaf is the son of, of, of Hashim. Sayyidina Hashim, his name is Amr. But he is called Hashim because, or he is named Hashim because, Kana Yahshim, they, 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 they say, Kana a Athrid, like Yahshim. What happened was, he was a very generous person. Sayyidina Hashim, a very rich, wealthy, and generous man. He would <coughs> combine Al Khubz bin Lahm. كان يجمع الخبز مع اللحم ويحشمه meaning in Arabic meaning كان يحشم meaning he would connect it together بالأردن الحليم ها حليم حليم يسموه بالأردن حليم 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 another حليم the خبز the the bread with the with the with the meat he would do that uh, Hashim, the great grandfather of the Prophet وسلم, and he would give it to the people of Mecca because he was a very wealthy and rich man. And not only that, he would give it to not only the people, but after the people were, were, were full and satisfied, he would also give it to الطيور على رأس رؤوس الجبال. He would he would go to the mountains and he would feed the the beasts and he would feed the birds. How they talk nowadays about humanity and human rights and and, and look at the great grandfather the prophet is not just looking at human rights he's looking at even animal rights <laughs> and bird rights subhanallah and he's the first one that actually uh, established that trip the trip that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran rihnat al-shita was sayf what he would do saying Hashim was in the winter time they would go to uh, Yemen they would travel to Yemen and in the summer time they would travel to Sham, Sham, uh, right now Syria, Palestine, Jordan, and uh, Lebanon. They would all, it's all called Ardu Sham. The Prophet says, Allahumma barik lana fi Yemenina wa fi Shamina. And uh, who's the person that established that? The Prophet's great grandfather, Hashim. Hashim. And subhanAllah, uh, Hashim was, 
a respected man. He was a respected man in, in the eyes of all of Quraysh. In the eyes of all Quraysh. And so was his son, Abdul Manaf. And so was his son, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, he had a special carpet, a uh, firash or, or a sajda, like, like this, in front of the Kaaba. Nobody would sit on it except him. Nobody would dare sit on it. Like, he, was, he had Hayba, Hayba and Jalal. Like, he was uh, a very honored uh, person in the eyes of all the Arabs. And the Prophet Sallallahu as a child, he would come and sit on it. <laughs> so, uh, and his uncles are the people of Quraysh would try to like, you know, um, uh, make him get up and, you know, not, uh, or they would try to, try to uh, forbid him from sitting on the carpet of, of Abdul Muttalib. And Abdul Muttalib would say, Da'u ibni hala, leave, the, leave my son. He my son. فَإِنَّ لَهُ شَأْنٍ And when he grows up, he will be someone that's very important. And it's true. What uh, Abdul Muttalib was saying did happen. When he grew up, he became a, uh, uh, the most important person in the whole of human history. Even before he was a prophet. Even before he was a prophet, the Prophet ﷺ was honored and respected. Not only because of his lineage, but because of his character. Before he was a prophet. And I'll give you a small story of his beautiful... Uh, uh, akhlaq before even becoming a prophet وسلم, he had a, a uh, when, when, before, when he got married to Sayyidatna um, Khadija bint Khuwaylid Khadija bint Khuwaylid was gifted from her nephew Hakim bin Hizad at the time he was not, he's not a Sahabi but he will later become a great Sahabi she, he gifted to her his, um, his aunt Khadija bint Khuwaylid a servant, a slave. He bought a slave. He bought a slave from uh, from uh, Souk or Kav. They would call it. It's a marketplace. And who is that slave? That slave is Zayd bin Haritha. Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha. And how did Zayd bin Haritha become a slave? Zayd bin Haritha is from a noble tribe in Yemen. His father is called Haritha. Bin Sharahin al Ka'bi min Bani Kalb. Until now, they exist in Yemen. They are a noble tribe. But one day, uh, Sayyidina Zayd's mom, she took Sayyidina Zayd as a little baby and went to go visit her friends in one of the tribes. And in that tribe, some uh, uh, a caravan came and, 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 and killed all the people in that tribe and took. Um, uh, the children and the woman as, as, and, and went to the souq, the marketplace, and, and sold them as slaves. They wouldn't dare do this in, in the tribe of Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha because he, he comes from a noble tribe in Yemen, a, a well-known tribe. But Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha, she, his mom took her that day. What happened was, when, he, when they came to souq Uqqav, that's a souq in Mecca, Sayyidina uh, Hakim bin Hizam goes to the souq one day and he goes and buys um, Zayd bin Haritha, and he gives Zayd bin Haritha to his aunt Khadija bin Khuwaylid, who is the wife of the Prophet And what does Sayyidatna Khadija bin Khuwaylid do? She gifts him to the Prophet So now he's a savior who? Of the Prophet Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha. Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha, his fathers were looking for him, and they were searching for him. And one day, uh, one of the people of Bani Ka'b bin Kalb that from the same tribe of Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha, they come to Mecca and they, went, they came to do Hajj. Because that action, that pilgrim Hajj, they would still do it in the time of the Jahiliyyah, before the Prophet They would do it because it was the deen of Ibrahim And Quraysh, they were known for hosting and, and welcoming the people of, 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 of the Hajj. That one time they came to Hajj, they came to Mecca and they saw Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha and they recognized him and he recognized them. And so they, he asked about his, his, uh, his family and they told them that you know, your father has been looking for you, your uncle, your whole tribe is looking for you. And, and he told them to tell my people that I'm doing good, you know, um, uh, I'm a slave now, but I'm, alhamdulillah, I'm alive. I'm doing good, and uh, please tell my father that um, you know. Tell him my, uh, my send him my uh, my salams and, and and tell him that I'm okay. So they went back to uh, Yemen. They went back to Yemen, and they told their their fathers that your son Zayd is alive. And the father Haritha went straight with his with his brother Malik. And Haritha and Malik they came immediately to 
uh, Mecca. And they asked about uh, Zayd. And they, the people of Mecca told him that, oh, Zayd, he's with uh, Muhammad. This was before the Prophet was a Prophet. Oh, he's with Muhammad. And they asked about Muhammad. Where is Muhammad? Where can we find Muhammad? And then the people told him that, oh, Muhammad, you'll find him in the, either in the masjid or you'll find him in the... Because the Prophet he was always at good places. He was always at good places. In the Haram. You'll find him in the Haram, in the Kaaba. So they went to the Kaaba and they, fought, they saw the Prophet They told him, listen, Ya Muhammad, we come all the way from Yemen and we want our son. And we will give you whatever fidya you want. The fidya I was talking about. The, the bounty. Whatever fidya you want, we will give it to you. Just give us back our son. And he said, which son? And they said, Zayd, Zayd bin Haritha. He says, okay. But what if I uh, have a better option for you? And they said, what's, what's, the, what's, what's the option you, you are uh, telling us about? And he said, I will call Zayd and I will let him choose. If he chooses you, then I will give you to him without a bounty. You can have him for free. And if he chooses me, then I cannot uh, you know, force him to not stay with me. And they said, Alhamdulillah, that is better than what we wanted. You are a fair man. You are a just man. That is, that is not. That is beyond just. Uh, you are a generous man, <laughs> and they said, uh, "Sure." And they they called uh, Zayd, and obviously it's his father and his brother uh, Malik and Haritha, and they know for sure, without a single doubt, that Zayd will choose them. And when uh, they came, when uh, Sina Zayd comes, he came. The Prophet ﷺ told them, "Do you know these two men?" And he says, "Of course. This is my father." And this is my uncle, and he greets his uncle, and he greets his father, and uh, you know, it's a warm hugging and everything. And then the Prophet ﷺ, uh, let them take their time, and then he tells them, he asks them, Would you rather be with me, or would you rather be with your father and your, your, your uncle, Haritha and Malik? And he says, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, by Allah, I will not choose anyone other than you. And then they're shocked. Haditha and, uh, and, and Malik. Wait, like he has said, do you choose slavery over freedom? Are you mad? Are you choosing slavery over freedom? And he says, this man, he's pointing to the Prophet ﷺ, is not only my father, but he is a father and an uncle at the same time. <laughs> so uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, he gets up and he says, Ishhadu ya Quraysh. And he says, he's in the Haram. Inna Zaydan hadha ibni. That this Zayd is my son. You know, and yarithuni wa arifahu. That uh, meaning that he's my son, my actual son, and that there will he will even inherit me if I pass away. To the fact that he will even inherit me if I pass away. And then everyone used to call him Zayd bin Muhammad. In the Bukhari, in the Sahih Bukhari, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar ibn Khattab says that Kunna nadruhu Zayd bin Muhammad until the ayah came, until the verse was revealed. Ud'uhu li abai. Like uh, call them because. Now you're playing games with them, with the, with the lineage. So just call them by their fathers. Yes, they're your son, but not your biological son. So the, everyone used to call him Zayd bin Muhammad. Zayd bin Muhammad. Until the ayah uh, was revealed. And, uh, and then everyone started calling him Zayd bin Haritha again. And when the Prophet ﷺ stood up and said that, his father Haritha and uh, his uh, his uncle, at least they left with, with, a, with a, some sort of, you know, um, they were relieved that, okay, our son is in good hands. You know, he's in good condition. He loves his, uh, this man. And this man is obviously taking good care of him. So they went back to Yemen, alhamdulillah, and they were, they were in some sense of relief. And this, is what, this was his akhlaq, and he, his, he, this is how he treated his slave. Yeah, imagine how he treated his, uh, imagine, imagine how he treated his, his, his uncles. Imagine how he treated his mothers, his fathers, you know? And uh, how he treated Halimut al Saadiya. You know, um, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if it's mentioned in the first seerah, but he had a ummuhu min al wada'a, his mother that um, breastfeeded him, Halimut al Sa'diya. When she came later on, how did he welcome her? How did he treat her? He treated her with full respect. That's his mother. So, imagine, what do you think about his own biological parents? You know, that's why we say that they have complete uh, tawheed. And even there's some ahadith you might hear that the uh, Prophet says, uh, and it's a song hadith. Inna abi wa abak fi na. What do we do, what do we say about that hadith? When the Prophet ﷺ says that well, someone came and asked the Prophet ﷺ about his father, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna abi wa abak fi na. That my father and your father, they're both in hell. The the Arabs they would call the uncle father. The Arabs they would call the uncle father, right? 
they, that's the tradition of the Arabs. They would call their uncles fathers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran. He says uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Am kuntum shuhada id hadar Ya'qub al maut Were you there when Ya'qub was in the deathbed? And he asked his children, Am kuntum shuhada id hadar Ya'qub al maut If qala li banihi, ma ta'buduna min ba'di? What will you worship? after me. And what do his children say? Na'abudu aba'aka Na'abudu ilahaka wa ilaha aba'ika Ibrahima wa Ismaila wa Ishaq ilahin wahidam Like they mentioned Ishaq, uh, sorry Ismail and Ismail is not their father. Ismail is their uncle. But they said aba'ik, yani your father. They mentioned Ismail despite him not being their father his uncle but they mentioned him as Ab, Ab. And every prophet not only the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Every prophet comes from a noble family, it comes from a, no, a noble household, it comes from two righteous parents. Even Sayyidina Ibrahim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the story of his father, that was his uncle, as of, not his biological father. And the Prophet sallam, he, he also has an uncle, Tabbat Yada Abi, Abi Lahab. That is what the uh, Mufassirun say about this, uh, this hadith. That is what the uh, Shariqun, they say about this hadith is, the scholars have, have agreed that he, that his, 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 all his forefathers were people of Tawheed. And even that hadith where the Prophet says, Ista'dantu Rabbi an Azura Ummi, that I asked my Lord if I could visit my, the grave of my mother because she is buried in Al Abwa. When she passed away, she passed away in Al Abwa. Al Abwa is a city um, that's between Mecca and Medina. That's between Mecca and Medina. And the Prophet's father, Abdullah, is buried in Medina in Yathid when he went to go visit his, uh, his uncles from, uh, from Bani Najjar. Anyway, he says in the hadith, Istadan to Rabbi. I asked permission for my Lord to visit my mother and he gave me permission. And then he says in that hadith, وَاسْتَأَذَنْتُهُ أَنْ أَسْتَغْفِرَ لَهُ And I asked him permission if I could seek uh, forgiveness for her. فَلَمْ يَأْذَنْ لِي He did not give me permission. And some people use this hadith that <coughs> the mother of the Prophet is not, uh, you know, not on the people of, of faith. And that is wrong. That is wrong. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to do istighfar for your parents, and he does that dua as well. He's telling us to tell them this is the Quran, this is an ayah, a verse. And, 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 and in the science, in the, in the science of Allah, in the in usul al fiqh, rule number one if there is a verse of the Quran and a, a hadith, the verse of the Quran comes first. There's a contradictory between them. And then if Allah subhanahu wa says, وَقُلْ رَبِّ بِرْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَنِ سَغِيرًا And what he, he's praising, he's seeking forgiveness for them. He's asking forgiveness for them. So it is very important to, to study the seerah of the Prophet to study the lineage of the Prophet to, to memorize the nasr of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to you know to 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 benefit us insha'Allah from from the from the stories of of, of him sallallahu alaihi and the stories of his of his great grandfathers of his fathers <coughs> his mothers because they are all righteous people they are, they all have beneficial stories they all have they all have stories that will enlighten us insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sinna Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi sallam alhamdulillah. لكن عطاؤه فاخيم قدوس قدس بالصفاء روحي وافتح علينا أكبر الفتوح سلام يا مؤمن آمن روعاتي